Praise the Lord, and God bless you. Gil Burgos here with another prophetic podcast from Grafter and Messiah Ministries. Today, I'm going to be talking about an interesting subject that I've been dealing with for some time now. And uh, I don't know, just lately when I look online and I look on social media, there seems to be a lot of going back and forth when people are uh, uh, thinking about the Torah or the law, how they read it. And um, the big debate is should Christians follow the commandments of the old covenant? Um, I don't know. The more I studied the Torah, the more I kind of like changed my views a little bit because I'm just seeing, as I study more of the New Testament, I'm noticing that when Jesus said in uh, Matthew chapter 5, he didn't come to, to abolish the law, but to fulfill it. And I've been doing a lot of study, a lot of research again on this topic, and I'm just seeing that uh, we don't see like anyone dismissing the commandments of God in the Old Testament. I, I don't see that. I just see people just reading into the text things that are really not there. And if you read the Bible that way, you already made up your mind of what you believe. And I think a lot of us have been brainwashed in believing a certain way because we've been taught for many years and trusted people uh, what they have taught us and preached to us from the pulpit or Biba or whatever, and either Messianic congregations more or more than church. But sometimes if we just take people for what they say, uh, we can go down the wrong path because it's a man's perspective of what he read of the word. So it's up to us. I've always said this, to go back into the Word and see if what they are saying and teaching lines up in Scripture, and not only lines up with Scripture, but taken in full context and knowing that Old Covenant and New Covenant, how it works together. And we can't dismiss everything from the Old Testament. And a lot of people, I think modern-day Christianity has done that. They've dismissed just about everything. And they've just pick and choose what they want to use for today. And I don't, I don't pretty much see that from Paul. Uh, and I'm not, I'm talking about after Jesus or Yeshua ascended. People may say, well, that was before Jesus, you know, died and was buried and resurrected and he ascended. Once he did that, everything changed. Well, not really. I, I don't, I don't see that in the Bible. I don't see him saying that these commandments because he's always said if you love me you keep my commandments right so i don't see him saying until i'm here you follow these commandments once i'm gone you don't have to follow them anymore i don't see him saying that anywhere in the gospels and neither do you see it in the book of revelation when he comes back on the scene neither you see paul even coming close to that so i think what people have done again is just misinterpret the word, especially when it comes to passages like Romans 14. Uh, there's a passage, I believe, in Colossians 2, and, and there's something else in Galatians. I think it's chapter 4. I was looking at a very, very interesting video um, just yesterday from a gentleman. Let me see if I can get his name for you uh, from Facebook. And a lot of the stuff that he was talking about was really, really making a whole lot of sense. Uh, where did I put it here? Uh, hold on, let me see if I can find it. Uh, I I didn't I thought I posted. Oh wait a minute, I'm in the wrong page. I, I'll find it, but I get you his name too. It's amazing. Again, the more you study and the more you do research, and the more you just look at the Bible verses, my God, you say, man, where did I go wrong? What what, what have I been doing? What have I been teaching? I missed it. So. Let's look at something here really quick. I'm not going to go too long with this, but let's talk about the Mosaic law that people just have this thing like just run from it. Now, from the article here from God Questions, it says the Mosaic law was given specifically to the nation of Israel. And he quotes Exodus 19, Leviticus 26, 46, and Romans 9, 4. It was made up of three parts, the Ten Commandments, the ordinance, and the worship system, which included the priesthood, the tab tabernacle, the offerings, and the festivals. And they, you see that in Exodus 20 through 40 and Leviticus 1 through 7 and chapter 23 as well. And it says the purpose of the Mosaic law was to accomplish the following. And he puts uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I'm looking at this for the first time. And that's how I do stuff. 
Number one, reveal the holy character of the holy eternal God to the nation of Israel. Leviticus 19, 2, 27 through 8. Number two, set apart the nation of Israel as distinct from all other nations. Exodus 19, 5. Number three, reveal the sinfulness of man, which you see in Galatians 3, 19. And and it says, although the law was good and holy, Romans 7, 12, it did not provide the salvation of Israel. It says, as it says in uh, the word, it says, no one will be declared righteous in God's sight by the works of the law. Rather, through the law, we became conscious of sin. Romans 3, 20 and Acts 13, 38, and 39. Now, it's interesting when when I was looking at Paul just recently uh, this week. uh, I forgot the chapter. I don't have. I'm just so unprepared. (laughs) But it's a verse in Scripture that Paul says he was trying to get to Jerusalem to celebrate the feast. And that really struck a nerve. And I believe it was the Feast of Weeks. He was trying to get there. Then I'm wrong. Forget me if I'm wrong. But he was trying to get to Jerusalem to get to a feast. Now, did he? That makes a whole lot of sense when you really analyze that. If Paul was heeding to get to Jerusalem to celebrate the feast, the feast was in full effect. He didn't say, "Well, you know what? We're not doing that no more." <laughs> you didn't see Paul saying that. You didn't say, "Well, dumb things are for from the past, and or those things are when Jesus was around." You don't see Paul mentioning that. You see him trying to get to Jerusalem to get to the to place to celebrate the feast with his brethren and other worshipers and believers in the Messiah, Yeshua. So this really, really is something interesting. Uh, and if you want to contact me after with this uh, presentation, you want to get back to, I'll give you all the references. I just don't have them in front of me now but I'll get you every reference you need from everything I'm just telling you today. Anyway, where was I? Somebody's sending me a message. Okay. I'm not going to read too much scripture. I'm just going to get to the points here. Okay. Uh, Number four, provide forgiveness through the sacrifice offerings. Leviticus 1 through 7 for the people who had the faith in the Lord and the nation of Israel. Number five, provide a way of worship for the community of faith through nearly through yearly feasts, Leviticus 23. Number six, provide God's direction for the physical and spiritual health of the nations. And you'll see this in Exodus 21 through 23, Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 19, and Psalm 119, 97 through 104. Number seven, reveals to humanity that no one can keep the law, but everyone falls short of God's standard of holiness. That realization causes us to rely on God's mercy and grace. That's true. I meant to that. When Yeshua came, he fulfilled the Lord, and with his death paid the penalty for of our breaking it. Amen to that. Galatians 3.24, and it says, I'll read that. So then the law was our guardian until Christ came, and all that we may be justified by faith. The difference between a Christian and a Orthodox Jewish person or one in the Orthodox faith is that they use the law or the Torah to justify or make themselves righteous. If they follow these set of rules and laws, then they become righteous. However, when from a Christian or a Messianic Judaic perspective, it's not about that. It's about receiving the right, righteousness of, of Christ, of Yeshua Messiah, and then we become fulfillments of everything that Jesus became. He became sin for us, that we become what? The righteousness of God in him. So there's no more following. We follow and we observe the laws, but not for to be made right with God. We've already been made right with God. We're just obeying these commandments and that's it, just to please God. But not, again, to make ourselves righteous and holy, because it's not about making ourselves holy through our own works. The book of Galatians is filled, filled with that information. It's stating a lot of things that we cannot make ourselves right with God on our own effort. And I'm pretty sure you know that. So that's the purpose of people need to really understand. Even Messianic believers need to really refocus. And sometimes I think some people get they get crossed over to the other side when it, they have to make you have to make a a distinction between Judaism and rabbinical Judaism, and I think some people cross over a bit too far. You have to set the standard and say, okay, I'm all for it. We 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 usually follow Judaism and all that, but we got to be very careful that we don't step over to the side of the fence and begin following rabbinical Judaism. That's when it gets messy, and that's when it gets complex, and that's when it gets 
uh, condemnation and all this strictness, and then we don't have no more freedom in Messiah. Now we're under the law, so to speak, and then things get messy again. Finally, it says the purpose of the Mosaic law raises three questions. Again, like I was just mentioning, here it says, are you trusting in yourself to keep all the Ten Commandments all the time, which you can't do? Amen to that. Or have you made the choice to accept Jesus as your Savior, realizing that he has fulfilled all the commandments all the time for you, even paying your penalty for breaking them? The choice is yours. And that's it. I just want to just make that point because I don't want people to get mixed up. And I'm all for certain things when, when people get too hung up becoming, you know, I, I've heard the terminology such so many times of being Torah observant. I get it. I understand what you're saying. But some people, again, take it a little bit too far. And we don't want to do that. We want to remember who we are as believers and who we uh, have become, new creatures, new creatures in him. And we are being made right and holy in him. I mean, there's nothing wrong with observing any commandment that God gives us. It's beautiful. But again, it doesn't make us righteous and holy. We are just obeying the righteousness of the Lord and walking in obedience. The law is for that. But when we use it in the wrong way, it's like it shows us our sinfulness. So we have to, again, be very careful when we look at the Mosaic law. But anyway, uh, again, people pick and choose. They'll say, well, some of it we can use, some of it we can't use. Listen, you have to be careful. And I understand where people are coming from. There's all kinds of texts that people will throw at you. One of them, they'll say, read Galatians, read the book of Hebrews. And yes, fine, we will do that. But still in all, we have to go back to the basics of who we are as new creatures or new creations in Messiah Yeshua. And knowing that God is for us. God is not trying to make things complex. And as I said in Matthew, Jesus said, I did not come to abolish or throw away or do away with the law, but to fulfill it. And that's what he has done. He has fulfilled the law. And never once did he say, okay, this is good until thus and thus, and then that's it. No more. Okay, Paul, take it from there, make up a new new thing. And it, you don't see that. Nowhere, anywhere in the New Testament. So I just want to make that clear to you, clarify some issues. And I hope this sheds some light on some of the questions that you may have about the Mosaic law. Amen? Well, that's it for tonight. God bless you. Thank you for listening to a short, brief rendition of the prophetic podcast on Grafted in Messiah. Go go there if you want to uh, check out the radio show, Prophetic Encounter Radio. You want to uh, go to the website and look at what I have there. That's a lot of stuff. I'm not telling you here, so you got to go to the website. <laughs> www.graftedinmessiah.org and then everything will be there for you. Great website. And uh, there's a lot there. Amen. All right, I'm out of time. God bless you. Until the next time I see you, may the Lord bless you. May he keep you. May he shine his light upon you, be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you shalom. Take care, and we'll see you again on Grafted in Messiah. Peace.